EasyJet's passenger numbers out for August, climbing to 8.68 million during that month. That's up 5.6 from a year earlier. Um, how did that compare with Ryanair? Ryanair did a 5.5 number for the last month. Load factors kind of static, but Ryanair obviously dealing with strikes and staffing issues uh, over the last year. Uh, joining us now is uh, Johan Lundgren. He is the EasyJet CEO. Good morning. Nice Good to morning. see you. Nice, um, nice numbers, but do you think you benefited from any kind of trade across from Ryanair? It did have problems. There were headlines about strikes, cancellations, etc. How did that feed into you? Did you see any benefit? Well, I mean, it's difficult to point out specific, uh, you know, parameters that you have, uh, you know, uh, possibly benefited uh, from. You know, we are quite pleased with the numbers uh, that, that we have uh, had in August. And if you think about that, those numbers means that every day we flew more than a quarter of a million passengers in August. So we are very pleased with that number. Does that pick up? To, to, are you, what are you expecting sort of going forward from here? What, is, what, is the, what does the fall look like? What does the autumn look like? Obviously, winter is a much more difficult period. Give, give us a sense of where the business is going. Yeah, so we've had a positive momentum really throughout the year, and, and we are quite uh, uh, comfortable with the demand going forward as well. Of course, there are uncertainties out there in terms of fuel prices, in terms of competitive landscape, uh, capacities in the marketplace, but we feel comfortable where we are right now. Um, you've taken over Air Berlin. You've got, you've got that business coming in. Are you starting to see the synergy benefits of that coming into the business now? Are you starting to feel the advantage? Yeah, I think one should remember that we actually launched the sales of Air Berlin and we completed a transaction only in December last year. And our first departure was in January this year. So this is a, this is a strategic uh, uh, transaction that we made, which was give us a fantastic position in, in the biggest city, basically in, in the biggest market in, in Europe. So this will take some time before we get up to a profitability that is an average of, of the network. But we're targeting to break even next year. And we've had a fantastic year from the response from the customers in, in Berlin. And operationally, we, we are very pleased with how the year has gone so far. I'm sure my colleague who lives in Berlin, Matt Miller, is paying attention to this uh, with a great deal of interest. Um, you've signed a deal as well with Singapore um, and Singapore Air. And, and the reason for that, and this is part of your worldwide program, effectively what what you're doing here is becoming the feeder network, the short haul network for the full service carriers. Um, the full service carriers have always struggled to make money when it comes to their short haul networks. They, they, they kind of use them as a loss leader to feed into the, into the more profitable long haul ones. Can you make money on worldwide? Can you make money on a transaction like this? What advantages does it bring you? Well, what it does is basically opens you know, EasyJet up for a whole new set of customers by, by actually connecting our European network, which is actually the strongest and, and best when you're looking at the, the, what we're delivering to the primary airports in Europe. But what we haven't done until we launched this product, we were unable to be part of a you know, single transaction when you're connecting to other destinations. So this is what Worldwide by EasyJet is doing. And the fact that we signed Singapore Airlines is just a testament also to the caliber of partners that are attracted to this proposition. So we definitely think we can make money on it. And it really is a good uh, solution for, from a customer perspective. And does it require a critical mass to make money? Like, do, you, do you have to sign more? Are you, are you at the point now where it makes money for you? No, it doesn't require you know, a lot of critical mass to do that because it's really a risk-free proposition. What is the beauty of this from EasyJet's point of view is really that we are now participating in the long-haul market without actually changing our business model. And also for the partners that we're signing up for, they take advantage of the Europe's best uh, short haul network, which EasyJet is able to offer. So I think this is really a win-win for both the partners. But, you know, the, the, the most benefit will come to the customers who will be benefiting from the prices and the, the offers that we have and also the connections that our partners will, will give. We're spending a lot of time at the moment talking about the Italian government. Uh, there's a budget process that is underway. It seems to be all-consuming. Uh, the ministers and uh, the senior figures from the party seems to be spending an awful lot of time on that. Um, you've bid for, for bits of Alitalia. I, do you have any visibility on how that's going? Do you kind of, are, are you talking to the Italian government? Is this new Italian government kind of giving you anything back in terms of, in terms of answers to the questions you're asking? Where, where are we? Yeah, basically, we, I can just refer to what we said previously, that we have uh, resubmitted an interest in, in part of Alitalia, and uh, we are continuing in, the, in that process. But, but 
is, is it moving at the kind of pace that you originally thought that it might? I can only say that, that we're, <laughs> we are in contact with the government there. Uh, in terms of where the business goes forward from here, where are you kind of investing most of your time? There, there are kind of there are a number of different aspects of, of what we're going to talk about here: digital technology, female pilots, um, including, including increasing the gender balance within the airline. I know Caroline, your predecessor, was very keen on that. Where are you spending most of your time at the moment? I mean, EasyJet is a company with fantastic amount of strengths, truly great strengths that I and the team are, are, are able to capitalize and can build upon as well. And we have, for instance, three things that we are going to focus on as strategic initiatives. Really initiatives that the company has been working on before. Uh, one is to increase uh, the bookings that we have for holiday passengers. One is to also refine and develop a more sophisticated product for our business passengers and also to develop and launch a, a loyalty program. Uh, and I, I think that this is all underpinned by the investment that we're doing in data. Data is an absolutely key enabler for us to uh, bring in more efficiencies into the company and also to bring customer benefits. We, for instance, hired 28 uh, new data scientists in the company that will work specifically on, on, on customer benefits, such as making sure that we have an optimized schedule, such as making sure that we, we are engaging with the customers at the time when they want to be yep. engaged from us. Uh, and that's just an example of the investments. Where we're do making. you say, I currently, I think, had, was it a 20% target of uh, female pilot, pilots going forward? Yeah. I think you're kind of in the low teens at the moment. Yeah, 13 percent as right. of last year. So how easy is it going to be able to get up to that 20 percent? Well, it's an interesting thing. I mean, we're very committed to, to this target of 20. and We want to go beyond 20 percent in 2020 because it just makes sense. You know, it opens up, you know, ourselves to more people who can join in for the company. Um, and I think it's something that, you know, we notice that the key thing we have to do is also to be able to provide role models. This starts very early when we looked upon our male uh, pilots and we asked and when they had decided to become pilots, half of them decided by the year of 10 that they wanted to become pilots. But if you did the same question to the female pilots, hardly anyone had considered to be a pilot when they were in, in their teens. So this is really about creating role models. And that's why we're engaging so much with schools uh, and, and other forums to, to bring those role models out.